I bought the cheapest macro ring flash that I could find on AliExpress and recently got it delivered. I got this for, I think it was about 38 Australian dollars delivered to my home, which really is incredible when you think about the fact that some of these can run well into the hundreds, if not up close to a thousand Australian dollars. Uh, so this particular one, I chose this because it came with everything that I needed to be able to, to use it. And typically I would use a flash uh, with a cover over it, which worked quite well. But instead what I thought I would do is I would give this a go. So here it is on AliExpress. This one looks like it's a little bit cheaper. They must have a sale on. Uh, but you can see that it comes with all of the adapter rings, which are the step down rings. It uh, seems to have uh, a whole bunch of settings and things. And to be honest with you, the reviews actually were pretty good as well. So I was, I was sort of thinking to myself, well, if people that have bought this before think it's that's good, then I'm gonna buy it and I'm gonna check it out. So I thought what we would do today is I'm going to take it out of the box. Uh, we're gonna put it onto my lens. I've got my Laowa 100 millimeter two to one uh, macro lens on the camera. Uh, we're gonna pop it on there. We're gonna see if we can get it going. I, I have not opened this box yet, so it's gonna be a brand new experience as we do this. So as I open the box, let's have a look and see what's in there. It's all pretty well packed as you would expect. Uh, that looks like it's a bag of adapter rings. Sure is, look at that, that's all the adapter rings. We'll open those up shortly. Whole bunch more adapter rings. They are plastic, I can feel just by the way that they are plasticky. And then it looks like there's the actual flash itself inside this bag. So I'll just get it out and have a look and see what it looks like. All individually wrapped. Feels very light and flimsy, once again, that you would expect. It does have a plastic protective little cover on that to protect it, so they've taken a bit of care there. It's all nicely put together. Not sure how it's going to work though. This is the, the telling thing, isn't it? Is does it work any good? Anyway, and there's the actual ring flash itself. So you can see that it's got that nice set of uh, rings around it. Now, it looks like it's a clip-on. So on the back of the ring flash, it looks like it's got clips. Okay, now the way you can see that, there you go. See those little plastic lugs? So it's got those lugs there uh, around the ring that is gonna help you, you know, uh, lock it on and uh, put it onto your your uh, lens you can see it's got a couple of spring-loaded buttons on the outside that seem to pull those lugs in so it's obviously very easy to pop on and off um, i have no idea how it works so we're just going to have to have a look at the menu there is an instruction manual in here what else is in here a little quality control tag isn't that lovely some silica gel Always keep these if you're a, a scuba diver and you like underwater photography because you can pop those in your camera case as you go diving and it will uh, continue to absorb the moisture and stop your camera from uh, fogging up. Um, now this is just a, looks like a warranty agreement sheet. We don't need that. Here's the instruction manual. It is pretty thin, so I'm expecting it's going to be pretty easy to use and it looks like uh, there's a fair bit of Chinese in there. Oh, there is some English. There we go. So I think what I'll do is I'll get this onto my camera and then I will uh, I'll share with you how the experience was at getting it onto the lens and then we might go out and shoot some images with it and just get a feel for whether or not a you know $38 Australian investment was worthwhile or did I waste my money. Okay, so I uh, got the ring the adapter ring on there which was fine they were pretty you know, we're not straight on, no problem. So, you know, the fact that they're plastic and very cheaply manufactured means, doesn't mean a thing. And you pretty much got every size there. I can see there's, you know, 52, 77. I've got the 67 on my camera. There's step down rings. I don't think it would matter which lens you have. You are gonna be able to find one to fit your camera, which is cool. Uh, now, just a word of warning, I nearly uh, broke this as putting it in as extremely flimsy, this uh, battery door. So you sort of have to really, you know, put a lot of force across the whole door as you do it. Uh, on the back of this unit, there's a few different buttons, which you can see there, uh, pilot mode, uh, light and on off. And then you've got some sort of power adjustments in the middle of that, that big round button. If you can see that one right in the middle there is a set button. Uh, I'm not sure what that's for. I can't see anything in the manual about what the set button does. And you don't seem to need to use it to change any of the settings. So now that the battery's in there, let's turn it on. So hold down for two seconds, it says, for the power, yep, came straight on, which is good. There's a light telling me it's in flash mode and that it's uh, half power, which is cool. Uh, and then there's just a few different buttons. So the pilot button, I believe, will give it a flash. Let's just press that. 
sure did. There we go. Uh, I can adjust the power. So we'll go down one and a half times and we'll go up one and a half times. You probably can't see much difference in that. I can't either, to be honest with you. <laughs> anyway, we'll try it on the camera and we'll just see what difference it actually makes. And then you've got these modes. So we've got a left mode. So the left means that one half of the unit is going to flash. And of course, right means the other half of the unit is going to flash, which it did. And then you've got a light mode, which is just continuous light, which is obviously very good if you are doing macro video. Uh, that would be very helpful, I'm guessing. And that's pretty much it. So it's pretty straightforward. So we'll put it onto the camera. It does have a hot shoe, so it should work with the camera's uh, flash command. Um, as you can see, straight into the hot shoe, very easy. And because of the way that works, it goes on very simply. I'm imagining we need the logo to be at the bottom. Um, it's not very tight, so it's gonna move around, but if you wanna use the left or the right um, and be able to do that without looking at your flash you, you, uh, on the front of your lens to see which side's actually flashing, but you could, of course, move it if you wanted to light from above or light from below, or you know what I mean? So it's actually quite good that it's easy to move. Um, now this lens itself is completely manual. Uh, it is a, um, a two to one Laowa 100 mil lens. It aperture's manual, everything's manual, so I don't get any information through anyway. Um, this obviously is all manual, this flash unit. You're not going to, um, you know, for $38, you're not gonna get anything with through the lens, uh, TTL metering or anything like that. Uh, it's not gonna be very sophisticated. Let's just see if it actually fires off now. So it's actually gone off. Oh no, it just came back on, there we go. So there you go, there's an auto off function on the, on the flash itself. Uh, if it doesn't get a signal for a while, just to preserve your batteries. But it definitely lights up. Let's try it with uh, just on left. There we go, there's left. And as I said, you could if you wanted to, if you wanted to make it so it was on the bottom or on the top. So you could light it from either side, which is cool. Uh, right is the other side, obviously, and then back to flash. And then you've got that continuous light if you're doing video. Um, yeah, there you go, pretty straightforward. And then you can adjust the power when you're out there on the in the field. So I think that's the next step is let's take it out. Uh, a pretty wet day out today, uh, drizzly, overcast. But to me, that is a perfect day for uh, macro photography. So we'll go out, take a few shots, and then we'll, uh, we'll have a look at those images and just see how this light performs in the field. All right, well, it is a little bit wet and soggy and uh, not really sure what I'm gonna shoot, to be honest with you. I'm just having a bit of a walk around the bush to see what I can find. Uh, but I think what I'll do is uh, I'll just find a couple of interesting things. Let's just get this tested. It doesn't have to be epic shots, does it? It just has to be testing of the light. Uh, but what I, you know, I would like to get under some canopy where it's quite dark and really put the light through its paces. So I'm just entering a little bit deeper till I get to a point where I'm definitely covered up by the trees and then I'll just find some interesting things to shoot um, and we'll just run we'll just put this this ring flash through its paces and just see how it goes like I said typically I would use an SB910 with a diffuser on it and I've got two different diffusers but today I'm going to use this it's obviously a lot easier to set up so if it gets good results I'll be pretty happy but uh, time will tell we'll have a bit of a look and we'll just see uh, what we end up capturing Okay, well, I found my first subject. It's just a little tiny flower here. It would be no, well, probably half the size of my pinky fingernail. Uh, so let's just give it a go and see what happens. One of the things that I'm really interested to see is for macro, what you really need to do is get a good depth of field. So you need to be shooting at a high aperture. So it really needs, the light really needs to be able to compensate for the fact that you're gonna be making a smaller hole with your aperture to get that depth of field. Um, and not letting as much light in. So I'm gonna leave this power for now on the zero in the middle. Um, I've got it on F8, this lens, and I'm gonna put it at ISO 400 to start with at 2 50th of a second now. Normally that's what I would shoot at with my flash. So let's just see how we go with this. Let's just get my hat out of the way because that's obviously hitting that flash unit. And I've just got to try and find that flower, there it is. I'll get that in focus. All right. 
and how close I am to it. There we go, it's pretty big. I think I'm gonna to have to use my tripod because I'm struggling to, uh, <laughs> to hold it steady enough. Now that is way too dark. So that was at 2 50th of a second. I'm gonna bring that down to 1 25th of a second. So we'll half it, but it was way too dark and that's on normal power. So let's try again. Let's try that. Still way too dark. So um, let's bring the power up to, and I don't want to go below 1 25th of a second. If you know the rule, you never want to be slower than the, your focal length. So this is a 100 mil lens. 1 100th is the slowest I really want to go. Um, so the other option is to bring the ISO up. So before I do that, let's try it on full power, just a different set makes. I'm not even sure I'm getting these sharp. Now that was definitely better. Definitely, yep, okay, great. Beautiful light too. Um, but what I can see straight away, which is quite annoying, because it is wet today, and it was good, good to do this, is the, the ring itself is reflecting off the water in the flower. So I'll show you that uh, on the screen. But yeah, you can see how that ring is actually affecting our final image. Um, and it might just depend on the subject so i'll just shoot this other flower here if i can find it where is it there it is there there we go it might have less water on it but but it definitely does not have enough light for me uh, to do what i like to do uh, with handheld Photography, it's not, definitely not without pumping up the ISO. So typically I can shoot one 250th of a second with my SB910 flash with the diffuser on um, at this sort of aperture without any problems, but this one is just not coping. So I'm just gonna bring the ISO up now to a thousand and we'll just have another go at that and then we'll, we'll move on to another subject. Uh, if I can find it again, there it is. But definitely in interesting to see that the ring is turning up very obviously in my image. All right, so there we go. So at ISO 1000, I'm now getting a much more acceptable image. Uh, not sure how sharp it is, but let's move on to the next one. All right, so I found myself uh, another small flower up here. In fact, I might shoot this one here. Uh, that's more at eye level, might make it a bit easier. Let's see how we go. Just, just gonna really fill the frame up. Very tricky this uh, this lens being a two to one is great, but brings a whole bunch of issues with focus. Yeah, I can't get it because it's moving around too much. Might have to just try and hold it as I do it. This is even worse. Yeah, unfortunately, it can be really tricky. All right, wow. So that, if I can get that focus right, is going to be a really nice image. So let's just see if we can hold it all together. I'm not that steady handed, unfortunately. It's going to take a few so I can make sure I get the focus right. Uh, beautiful all right so there you go gives you a bit of an idea it is uh in that instant it's actually doing a really good job uh, but i mindful i have to be at that higher iso to get enough light into the lens to get the the exposure that i need and i've got this on full power as well uh, and it's really you know it's taking its toll to to get an image it's not in focus i need to put my glasses on i think <laughs> so i can get one that's in focus and the rain is about to start coming down and I doubt this is waterproof either. But I'll keep trying with this until I get a good sharp image. All right, but definitely uh, we'll go back now. That's enough, I think, because the rain's definitely coming down and nothing is waterproof besides my Nikon. Uh, the video camera is not, neither is this, so we need to go back inside. But I, I, I've got enough evidence now to say that I can conclu conclusively say this is not going to replace a flash. 
uh, it is going to allow you to get out and take some photos uh, in you know with your macro lens without having to muck around with other things it gives you a different type of lighting it's a very even light across the subject so we'll uh, we'll jump back into the uh, the studio and we'll we'll have a look at the images and we'll decide you know whether or not it's worth the 38 dollars all right well i'm back from my trip and uh testing out the uh i don't know how you'd pronounce that the mickey mickey uh led macro ring flash uh, and it's the FC100, like I said, I got it for 38 Australian dollars delivered to my home. So not a lot of harm done giving it a go. Uh, a bit wet out there. I don't know how uh, weatherproof it is. You can see everything's pretty wet, but I do know that this lens also is not uh, weatherproof. So I had to get out of the rain. Um, I did stick around and take a few more photos. You just didn't see them in the video, just because I wanted to try and see what type of shots I could get. So I'm going to share those with you. That way you can get a bit of a look at... Uh, you know, at how this performs, and then I'll wrap it up with my sort of impressions and whether or not I think this is a good buy or not. All right, let's take a look. I'm just going to share my screen over here. Um, in fact, I will just change where I am. All right, so this was the very first image that I took. It's at uh, ISO 400, 1 to 50th of a second. I had the uh, flash unit on uh, normal power, which is sort of half power, which is that dot in the middle. Uh, which is zero you can have plus 1.5 or minus 1.5 and as you can see at 1 250th of a second it just didn't cut it now if i was using my sb910 uh, nikon flash with my diffuser 1 250th of a second at iso 400 is uh, is plenty um, so quite obvious that this lens does not have uh, the ability to be able to perform at the same level. Um, now I was at f8. Now at f8 with this lens, I'm shooting two to one magnification. Uh, the depth of field is crazy shallow, so you're going to see a lot of these images are quite out of focus. And so one of the challenges with this flash unit is it does not have enough light for me to be able to go higher than probably f8 safely without focus stacking or uh, really ramping up the ISO, and you'll see that shortly. Now, what I did do was then I shot the same flower. Oh, what happened there? Here we go. Uh, this one was at ISO 400, but 1 one twenty fifth of a second. And you can see that straight away it is lighting it up. Um, I also increased the power to plus 1.5. Straight away you can see one of the biggest challenges with this lens. Uh, it was raining, uh, which is always a nice time to do macro photography. You can see these little rings, LED light rings everywhere, uh, all over the image. And it's no different to having dust bunnies in your image. Uh, it can be quite distracting. Um, you can see that once again here, this one was now at ISO 1000. So I went from shooting at ISO 400 at 1 250th of a second at F8, and I didn't move my aperture at all. I then went to 1 1 25th of a second at F8. Uh, ISO 400 and then I've gone to ISO 1000 at the same settings and of course uh, as I mentioned I had bumped the power up to this maximum power on the uh, on the flash unit so uh, it, it just tells you that it's not powerful enough really uh, for uh, a lot of applications uh, once again you can see the the you know that macro ring light LED showing up on the image quite clearly and uh, you know, you can see it in a few spots anywhere there was anything reflective and that could be quite uh, annoying depending on what you're trying to photograph. Not very well diffused at all. Uh, same plant again, same problem. You can see that ring light very, very clearly. Um, now I've done nothing to enhance these images. I'm just so you can see what they're like straight out of camera. Uh, once again, the biggest problem is the ring light. I and mean, of course the noise that that has now developed because we're at ISO 1000, um, once again the ring light sort of making a problem. And as you can see, f8 with this lens is not high enough to get enough in focus. Um, I'm not shooting at much of an angle here. I'm shooting almost straight on, but you can see just the, the drop of the leaves is enough to go out of focus. I really need to be able to shoot at a much higher aperture. Uh, but with this flash, I just can't do it. And that ring, you know, that ring of lights is definitely very distracting and going to make a lot of these images unusable. Uh, so you probably, you know, for, um, you know, if you're really serious about your macro, I don't think this is the right flash for you. Once again, same problem. Um, now, all of these things are pretty much at two to one magnification. They're very small things that I'm photographing. 
uh, besides something like this, I'm, I'm not as close. Uh, but you can see in this application, even though you can see the ring here and there, it's, it does do a good job. At this point, what I was doing was I was putting the light on continuously. It was quite dark. I was under a lot of trees. And um, it does allow you to shoot like this with this beautiful black background. If you're doing video, I'm sure that it would uh, be a good option as well for really close up things. You can see here where there's not a lot of water. You can see one little ring light there or maybe a couple. But in the main, when there's no water or nothing to reflect it, uh, it actually does quite a good job. So I really quite like how it's done this. Um, once again, I'm at ISO 1000 though, so it's quite a noisy image. We'd have to do a little bit of post-processing to try and clean that up. Uh, but overall, it did okay. So for $38, is it worth it? Well, let me say this. If you don't already have a dedicated flash head uh, that you're using for your macro photography or a macro flash setup, uh, or you just want to have a bit of a dabble with macro and you don't want to invest heavily in a flash head and diffuser, then this is a great option because it will get you started. But you will have to keep in mind that if you're going to do uh, anything that is reflective, that it's going to play a little bit of uh, havoc on your final images. So things like frogs, for example, uh, even uh, insect eyes may get that round reflection. But in a lot of cases, if it's dry and you just want to play around with your macro lens, there's a good chance that it's going to do the job. You will need to up your ISO. Um, this lens of mine is an f2.8, so it's uh, quite a fast lens. And you can see that I had to bump the ISO up to 1,000 just to get uh, properly exposed images at 1 1 25th of a second. I couldn't go any slower than that handheld. Uh, and you know the rain started before I could get the tripod out and try some sort of slower shutter speeds. But anyway, um, it gives you a bit of an idea and hopefully that has helped you decide whether or not this flash is for you. Uh, for me, it was a bit of fun. Um, I might um, just hang on for a little while and, and give it a go on a few different things and just see how we go. But otherwise, uh, I will probably use my Nikon SB10 for most occasions when I'm heading out to do some macro. Anyway, hopefully you found the video helpful. If you did, make sure you smash that thumbs up button for me. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think if you've already been using this particular flash setup. Or do you know of another cheap flash setup for macro that I could buy and test out on the channel? More than happy to do that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Until the next video, I hope you get out there and take some photos. See ya. <laughs>